All right, let's uh, move on because we have already uh, taken a lot of time. How is Salesforce overcoming security concerns faced by businesses? So yeah, this is exactly uh, what I created a video on in order to, uh, I mean, I mean, in order to focus, like the main point that we wanted to focus other than all of the uh, educational things onto AI was, a lot of business people out there have, have this thing in their mind that they think AI is going to be a security threat to them because if they are going to fed it, like if, if they are going to fed it some data, it is going to save that data, whether it is a customer related data, some info product related data, any, any kind of data, whether it is going to be fed into the AI, it is going to be stored into the AI and it can be used against them as well. And they are scared about this. So this is something that we really want to uh, focus on. Uh, especially when considering the Einstein GPT or the AI cloud of Salesforce. Uh, let's take, take, take the help of, uh, first let's understand that how Salesforce has tackled this particular thing. With Salesforce, of course, Salesforce is using OpenAI capa Open AI's capabilities only, right? Uh, it has it has got its own things, a lot of things as well, but it's still using OpenAI's capabilities. As of now, in future, they plan to expand it to different different LLMs, Google, and it, uh, AWS as well. As of now, they're using OpenAI. They're using OpenAI. And uh, how they are planning to t uh, tackle the security concern amongst their customers is, uh, with the help of a GPT trust layer that they have created on their own, uh, which is going to help the customers uh, secure their data. Uh, and how it is going to do that, let's take, uh, let's have a look at this particular diagram. And let me explain it to you. So, see, from the CRM application that you're going to use, the prompt is going to come and uh, uh, like the secure data retrieval is going to happen from the data cloud where the information related to your organization and uh, I mean, Related to your org is saved. After that, the dynamic grounding is going to happen in which all of the information which is non-relevant is going to be like shed off and the key information required to get something done from the uh, AI uh, or the generative AI is going to be saved and rest all of it is going to be shed and then the masking is going to happen. So what that means is like, let's say you've fed, uh, you have you have sent some lead data into it, then the dyna in, in, the, in that lead data, whatever information is important in order to write down the email is, is, only, be, is only going to be the data that will be sent to the AI uh, rather than all of the lead data. And uh, that too is going to get changed in the data masking layer, right? Where if the name of the uh, lead is John, then it will be converted into David. And then it will be sent to the uh, AI to generate some content around it for the email and uh, through a secure gateway, of course, and they have this uh, with the AI, open AI as well, that the, no data will be saved with open AI. So that means they have the zero retention policy with these over all of these AI tools in order to protect their own data and their customers data, which is saved onto their cloud. So without it, without it, this was not possible. And hence you can be rest assured that your data is not uh, getting Exposed. shared uh, with, with external exposed. applications or exposed with different different AIs. Uh, and then after this, uh, I mean, after the AI gives you the output, the generation of the uh, like of the, of the content happens uh, in here in the trust layer itself. Of course, it has been generated by the generative AI, but a little bit brushing, polishing and everything. Then comes toxicity de uh, detection, which basically identifies that whether it has generated data, which is non-toxic or toxic. When we say toxic, it's just that it, it's not an absurd or a weird data that it has generated or a weird content that it has generated. That's all what gets uh, taken care of in this part. And then comes the audit trail. Each log gets maintained for all of the AI uh, transactions that you are happening, uh, that, that, you're, that, that you're doing. So in order to backtrack it, you can just go in, go and look into those, uh, those all of those audit trails and just identify which data got generated using an AI and which data got generated uh, with an individual only. So that's, that, that's, this is exactly how Salesforce is taking care of the trust, which is a very, very important value for them. Uh, uh, I mean, this is exactly how Salesforce is taking care of trust, uh, which is a very, very important value for them when it comes to AI. Hope that makes sense to yeah. you. It, it does? It did. All right. So just to I'm add, really good. Yeah, you are actually. Oh, no doubt in that. Yeah. So uh, if I talk about the zero retention policy, so like by default, OpenAI keeps the data that has been sent to them and the response that has been generated by it 
for their own purposes to train itself again so as we discuss like ai keeps on training itself keeps on improving itself so in this scenario it does not happen and salesforce and open ai has kind of contracted a deal where they would not be doing that so this is the important aspect if we talk about doing any kind of implementation like we can directly integrate it ourselves we can ask them but whether they will entertain it or they will not entertain it that we want our data not to be stored at their end it's up to their end or it's up to them like whether they will allow us to do that or not but with the trust layer salesforce has kind of partnered that deal and point so of all the custom uh, all of the custom implementations that you do this is not probably going to be the case yeah, but not probably uh, of course that's Except why you are uh, that you're not i mean yeah i mean that's why you're paying salesforce right yeah <laughs> <laughs> to get the same thing done yeah